Life Audio. Hello, thank you for listening to your daily Bible verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and his will for us. I'm your host, Shaka Hines, and after this short word from our sponsor, we'll dive into today's Bible verses in 1 Kings 8, verses 18 and 19. Grand Canyon University, a private Christian university in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, believes that we're endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. GCU believes in equal opportunity, and the American dream starts with purpose. GCU equips you to serve others in ways that promote human flourishing and create a ripple effect of transformation for generations to come. By honoring your career calling, you impact your family, your friends, and your community. Change the world for good by putting others before yourself to glorify God. Whether your pursuit involves a bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree, GCU's online, on-campus, and hybrid learning environments are designed to help you achieve your unique academic, personal, and professional goals. With 350 academic programs as of June 2024, GCU meets you where you are and provides a path to help you fulfill your dreams. The pursuit to serve others is yours. Let it flourish. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private. Christian. Affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Health insurance can be a burden, especially when you're young and don't visit the doctor often. Why pay for services you rarely use when there's a more affordable option, like only paying for what you need? For example, maybe you want help for unexpected hospitalizations, accidents, or when a sickness hits you out of nowhere. These would otherwise leave you with medical bill debt, a lot of it, which is the last thing you need while building your career or starting your family. If worrying about the unknown leaves you uneasy, it's time to take control of your health care. Christian Healthcare Ministry, CHM, offers a budget-friendly, faith-based alternative to traditional insurance with programs starting under $100 per month. With CHM, you can enjoy affordable health care and peace of mind while focusing on what truly matters, whether that's growing your business or spending time with your family. Visit chministries.org forward slash value to enroll today and experience a better way to handle health care costs. That's visit chministries.org forward slash value. Today's Bible verses are 1 Kings 8, verses 18 and 19. But the Lord told him, You wanted to build the temple to honor my name. Your intention is good, but you are not the one to do it. One of your own sons will build the temple to honor me. Now, when I was younger, I used to struggle, struggle hard when I read a book or watched a show where the hero did not live to see the victory achieved through their sacrifice. As a matter of fact, my foresight was so limited and my selfishness so great, I could not get excited about the thought of watching others achieve great successes at the cost of hardship to me if I was not a part of it or I couldn't be around to celebrate with them. Let me be honest, this attitude of misunderstanding the greatness of sacrificing to pass on a legacy to be fulfilled in another, it dogged me well into adulthood. Finally, now as my children become adults, I think I'm finally getting it. Often my role is to pour into them more and more often from the background. My role is to pass on to them the mantle of faithfulness to God. In today's passage, King Solomon recounts to the leaders of Israel an earlier conversation his father, King David, had had with the Lord. And 2 Samuel 7 provides some history behind his words. During a period in King David's life when God had settled him in his palace and given him rest from all the enemies around him, King David, he felt convicted for living in his grand palace when God's house had yet to be constructed. So, he sent for the prophet Nathan and discussed with him his plan to build a temple for the Lord. 
But through Nathan, God told David that he was not the one who would build him a house, but rather David's son would complete the temple. The Bible says that David's intentions were good, guys. His goal was laudable. His heart was in the right place. He simply was not the one chosen by God to accomplish this particular feat. David had a response to God um, that's detailed in 2 Chronicles 28, which might surprise some. But I believe it highlights some of the attributes that made God call David a man after his own heart. In verses 1 through 3, here's David. He says, it says, when he summoned all the officials of Israel to Jerusalem, David rose to his feet and said, My brothers and my people, it was my desire to build a temple where the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, God's footstool, could rest permanently. I made the necessary preparations for building it, but God said to me, You must not build a temple to honor my name, for you are a warrior and have shed much blood. King David then continued by charging his son Solomon to obey the Lord in everything. He told him, Take this seriously. The Lord has chosen you to build a temple as his sanctuary. Be strong and do the work. Then David goes on to give Solomon the plans for the temple and its surroundings. He gave instructions regarding how much gold, silver, and other materials should be used to make the items needed for service. And he made known to him every part of the plan God had revealed to King David regarding the construction of the temple. King David deeply desired to build God a dwelling place. But even though he was not the man God called to build his house, David chose not to be discouraged by the role he was called to play. Rather, he embraced the position God put him in and zealously made preparations to bestow a legacy on his son, There was no half-hearted submission when God changed the plan David had in his mind. He didn't even mope or passively wait for the temple. He relished the role God called him to. King David was more eager to obey God and for God's glory than he was to follow his own plan. Is that true of us? Is that true of me? When we lay our good, well-reasoned plans before God, And he comes back with a no, especially when he comes back with a, that's a good idea. I'm going to have another person do it. How quick are we to obey God eagerly and even participate in the preparations for another's legacy? God calls every person to different jobs in his kingdom at different times. We love to watch the fictional hero see All of her sacrifice bear the fruit of honor, glory, or even salvation. But I believe that God often gives us the role as the unseen but diligent worker in the background. That one that is making preparations God desires in order for him to accomplish his will in someone else. In other words, we may be working hard in the background in order to see God accomplish his will publicly through someone else. But both the preparations and the fulfillment work together for God's glory. 1 Kings 8, 18 and 19 again. But the Lord told him, you wanted to build the temple to honor my name. Your intention is good, but you are not the one to do it. One of your sons will build the temple to honor me. David recognized that every God-ordained calling is valuable, and he committed to his role in preparing his son for successfully building God's house. Let us, like David, be more concerned with bringing God glory through our joyful submission to whatever role he places us in. This is how we both live into and pass on a legacy of faith. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that you call us to partner with you in your grand design. God, that we get to play a role in what you do and bringing you glory 
is amazing. And yet, God, I know that sometimes my pride, our pride gets in the way and we start thinking that our role should be more important or that what we're doing doesn't matter. Lord, we submit that to you. We ask you to help us to see with your eyes how all of your plans and what you're calling us to all work together for the good that you want it to. So Lord, please help us to diligently and joyfully do the work that you call us to, knowing God that at the right time, you will lift us up. And we will share, God. We will share in your joy. We love you, Lord. Thank you for King David's example in his willingly and joyfully preparing all of the materials for the temple in order for him to pass on a legacy to his son. Let us be like King David. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Scripture and brain science agree. Meditating on God's Word transforms us and reduces stress in our lives. I'm Jody Nisnik, host of So Much More, Creating Space for God, a scripture meditation podcast. And each week I give you space to hear God's Word, listen to the Spirit, and pray about what's on your heart. And then we have a thoughtful conversation with guests to help us go deeper. Listen and subscribe at lifeaudio.com.